So, Bob, thank you for joining us today, and please share your thoughts on these two legends. Thank you, Ken, and thank you so much for making time for this important moment. The eyes of the world are now on Atlanta. We are the global headquarters for honoring civil and human rights. That distinction has been conferred because we have been home to Martin Luther King, Andrew Young, Jimmy Carter, and so many others. But this past weekend, as you noted, two of the moral aristocrats of the ongoing struggle for liberty and dignity departed. On Friday morning, Reverend Cordy Tyndale, or C.T. Vivian, left on the morning train. Hours later, Congressman John Lewis boarded Eternity's midnight train. What a strange and mysterious juxtaposition. Even now, we are at a loss to understand and absorb this tragedy, this confounding, compounded grief. C.T. Vivian was born in July 1924 in Boonville, Missouri. He pursued studies for the ministry at Nashville's American Baptist College, where he discovered the redemptive message of leading change through nonviolent tactics. During his pursuit of the right to vote in 1965, he was brutally assaulted by Selma's Sheriff Jim Clark. C.T. settled here in Atlanta. Many of us knew him well, where many of us remember him as a Renaissance man. He read voraciously, he spoke like a learned philosopher, and he disarmed everyone with his extraordinary, gracious, genteel smile. 2013, a grateful nation honored his personal sacrifice for the common good with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. C.T. Vivian was a friend of Rotary because he was a friend of wisdom, philosophia. Then there was John Lewis, the better known patriot for American freedom, born in Troy, Alabama in 1940, he declared his disdain for life on a rural farm with constricted opportunities. As a boy, he did what you and I would have done. He refused to accept explicit mistreatment based on racial prejudice. He wanted to check books out of the library, but he could not. He wanted to quench his thirst on hot days from the nearest cleanest water fountain. He could not. His family warned him to accept, wanted him to accept and accommodate to Jim Crow prejudice. But he believed that America was better than that. And that's what, what he declared when as a 23 year old, he was the youngest speaker at the historic March on Washington, where we all recall Dr. King's famous speech. He too had attended American Baptist College. John was 15 years younger than C.T. His battleground was also Selma, Alabama, demanding the American promise of the simple right to vote. But on March 7, 1965, he was brutally assaulted as well by state troopers on national television. It was called Bloody Sunday. So great a, so great a price paid for the equal justice under the law. Thereafter, John Lewis wore bandages and showed evidence of concussion and trauma. John Lewis was not professorial like C.T. In fact, like Patrick Henry, another great patriot who was elected to office, he was the eternal activist and change agent. He also moved to Atlanta. Eventually, he was elected to Congress. Capitol Hill would never be the same. He was the conscience of the Congress. He was the soul of America. He was the voice of goodness and common sense. He was our representative and our neighbor. On July 17, an ordinary sweltering Georgia Friday, C.T. Vivian and John Lewis boarded a train for eternal glory, from terminus to victory. So great a price did they pay for our freedom and dignity. Two Atlantans, two colleagues of Dr. King, two patriots. In fifth century BC Athens, each year the people gathered for a public funeral to honor their fallen warriors. 
An address was spoken by a prominent Athenian citizen. This time it was Pericles who declared, and I quote, what you leave behind is not what is engraved on stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others, end quote. And so as honorable Rotarians, we pause to honor these warriors. We salute them today, for we may never see their equal again. May the values of the Reverend C.T. Vivian and of Congressman John Lewis be woven permanently, deeply, lovingly into each of our lives. Amen.